This is the tale of Mama Curlew and why she sings a song that sounds so blue. There are many stories about why Mama Curlew needs to cry, but this is a story that may explain why Mama Curlew and her friends have reason to cry. So let's begin. If you follow the dragonfly's path above the billabong where the lilies are spread, past the tall spear grass with its lush green stems now fading fast, that little red dragonfly floats quietly past. Across the dry floodplain lined by pandanus palms with their fronds spiky and sharp, not far away, old paper barks stand on the edge of a vast Australian savannah plain. Finally, into the dry woodland, past those giant ant hills which appear like enormous mountain chains, the little red dragonfly silently drifts by. If you look carefully, blending in with the milkwood and gum trees, this is where Mama Curlew stands solemnly, pointing her head towards the sky. Mama Curlew begins to cry. Out of the treetops flew a shy Leichhardt's grasshopper, landing on a branch. He is thinking about supper. With a small voice, he innocently inquired, why, oh why, Mama Curlew, why do you cry? With a sigh, Mama Curlew replied, I cry because gamber and mission grass burn so hot. It has turned my home to soot and ash. The savannah woodland engulfed in flame, everything gone in a flash. Towering flames and cinders spread far and wide. Smoke so thick that it blackens the sky. Now I know why you cry, said the little grasshopper, with his whirly antenna pointing proud and high. My home too has been lost to fire and embers, leaving me with very few places to hide. Out from the pandanus clumps crept a black-footed tree rat. By Mama Curlew sighed, quietly he sat and then asked, Why, oh why, Mama Curlew, why do you cry? Once again, with a sigh, Mama Curlew replied, I cry because my home has disappeared beneath the bulldozer's blade. Gone are the acacia, old eucalypts and Livestonia that nature has made. No more ironwood, not an inch of shade, just dead timber piled high to be burnt in a blaze. Now I know why you cry, said the black-footed tree rat. My home too has been felled by a bulldozer's chain flattened earth to be converted into an irrigated plain. Out from the leaf litter, a fat blue tongue had come. Climbing an old log, she sat waiting for the warm rays of the sun. With the sunshine glistening on her scaly old back, she turned and asked, why, oh why, Mama Curlew, why do you cry? Once again, with a sigh, Mama Curlew replied. I cry because a feral cat menaced my friends in a vicious attack. Keeping still is our main defence. We drop to the ground. We keep our body dead flat. But that clever old cat has keen sight and smell. Armed with sharp claws and teeth, we are no match. Now I know why you cry, said the old blue tongue with a tear in her eye. I too have encountered a feral cat. He left scars all over my back. 
I hissed and I spat my jaws open wide, my blue tongue protruding round and fat. Lucky for me, I managed to escape into an old hollow log, waiting for days there I sat. Here are some reasons why Mama Curlew may cry, some challenges she must face that put a tear in her eye. But there is more to this story, there's always a glimmer of hope. We make a big difference by the actions we take. Guided by science, clever decisions we then choose. Equipped with sound knowledge, we then make it harder to lose. Good data, hard work, a better world we can make. We've all taken risks, bad decisions sometimes occur. Mistakes and wrong choices make us human. That's the way we learn. If we care for nature and decide to be kind, most things will heal, it's only a matter of time. Then when we hear Mama Curlew cry, we all have good reason to smile. Thank you.